And for every major, his uh, his major is Inside Golf Podcast. He's the creator and and the face of our commentary here, Mr. Andy Lack. Andy, hello, friend. How are you? Good morning, Paul. It's been too long. First major of the year. It's great to be back talking golf with you. Uh, always, always. I always enjoy our conversations. Young man, tell us about, uh, first of all, this is kind of a weird get-together, watching these guys on the practice tee, the guys that are on the Live Tour and the PGA Tour. How uncomfortable do you think it is on the grounds right now? I would say probably not as much as uh, a lot of people in the media want us to believe. I think a lot of... Uh, it's it, reports have already come out already that in terms of the broadcast, they're not going to acknowledge a ton of the live storylines. I think obviously because there are still some lawsuits that have not been resolved yet. Maybe it might get a little bit awkward between the players that have been a little bit more outspoken against the live tour. But in terms of the patrons, this is a tournament steeped in tradition. I do not think any of the live players will be experiencing any boos or jeers or anything like that come Thursday morning when the golf actually gets started you think that holds true then for yesterday's champions dinner you know i was thinking about that that's certainly a funny one and uh some of the live players whether it be patrick reed or sergio garcia carl schwartzel were asked about it and they said well you know we're going to we're going to show up it's not awkward for us if it's not awkward for them but then of course you have guys like freddie couples who are also in attendance at the champions dinner who have basically said i'm never going to talk to phil mickelson ever again well now you're at dinner seated <laughs> uh in the exact same room so would have loved to be a fly on the wall for that experience yeah man I, I, that would have been a great uh ha hidden camera video man that, that would have about a million views by now uh andy uh, as, as far as the course does it change year to year or or is it tweaked what what how does the course change from one year to the next yeah, absolutely. I mean, Augusta National is always evolving. There were changes ahead of the 2022 Masters. There have been more changes ahead of this Masters. The biggest change that probably is at the top of everyone's mind is that the 13th hole, the iconic par five coming down the stretch that's usually reachable in two by many players. You see a lot of eagles uh, by guys on Sunday. That hole has now been lengthened to 545 yards. There's a new back tee that's going to make that hole play a lot farther and it's been rainy and wet, and we're going to see a lot of rain this coming week in Georgia. So that's going to make the golf course play even a lot longer and make the decision making on a hole like that to go for the green and two a lot more interesting for some of these players. But the way those guys crush the ball as a par five, 540 yards, that still seems like it's if if you're if you're 300 yards plus off the tee, it still seems like a very reachable green. Oh, certainly. Yeah. I mean, the longer players, your Rory McIlroy's, your John Roms, your Scotty Schefflers, you have to imagine if they hit a good drive, it's still going to be a green light for them. It probably comes more into play with some of the shorter players right. that aren't get, aren't hitting at 300 off the tee and aren't getting that rollout. Well, you bring up Rory's name. It seems like every time this time of year, it's it seems like he's the guy. I mean, he, boy, he who hits it farther and straighter than Rory McIlroy? Nobody in golf right now. I mean, the only two guys that you could throw in from a ball striking standpoint that are on Rory's level right now are Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm. And with Rory, it's the same deal every single year at the Masters. There's no concerns about the state of his game. It's not. Yeah, John Rahm's still my pick. I'm hanging strong with Rahm. He was my pick in December. Uh, he's won about four or five times since then, so I see no reason to waver. He still has the most complete game on the PGA Tour this season. He's the only player on the PGA Tour to rank top 30 in all four major strokes gained categories. Augusta feels like it was built for him. He's done just about everything but win at this event. A chance to win, particularly with the weather forecast we get a wet long rainy golf course tougher conditions it's going to be even more of a grind on his body walking up some of those hills it feels like i think he has a very good chance to make the cut i mean i don't think he's going to go out there and embarrass himself i thought that he performed admirably at riviera he made the cut there and it's never a question of whether tiger has the shots he knows this golf course better than pretty much anyone else in the field 
he always said, and he talked about this in his press conference on Tuesday morning, it's about the walk, right? So that is the difficulty that we face with Tiger Woods these days at 47 years old is he still has some of the shots. He still has some distance off the tee. He still has a delicate touch around the greens. It's can his 47 year old body with all of these surgeries withstand four days of walking a golf tournament on Augusta national, which is the hilliest golf course that he will see all season. Andy, will I live long enough to see tiger and Phil, and then you fill in the blank for the third guy being the ceremonial tee shots at the start of the broadcast. <laughs> will, will that day come? I think it will with Tiger. You know, the Phil Phil's relationship to Augusta National is is the interesting one. I mean, this guy was the mayor of Augusta and you know, now it feels like since he left to live he doesn't hold that same regard. So I think, I mean, Phil has won multiple major titles, masters. Um, he is somebody that I would hope gets that honor someday. He remains with Tiger basically of the last three decades dating back to the early 90s after Tiger, the greatest golfer of this last generation. Um, so I hope to see it. I'm going to be interested to watch him as well this week, even though his game has not been particularly strong this year on the Live Tour. But uh, it should be such a very exciting week. We've got a ton of storylines in store. Andy, I hope we get to talk again before the week is over. And uh, as always, your insight You've forgotten more about this game than I'll ever know, so it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> uh, who would the third guy be if it was Phil Tiger? Just, just play along with me. Who would, who would, you, who else would it be? I mean, who's the other th contemporary that would fit into that ceremonial tee shot? Well, I mean, it's pro you, you got to think Rory would yeah. probably be the one that has the most decorated resume. But for him to be in that category, yeah, yeah, he's got to win the Masters, right? <laughs> yeah, Which he's, yeah. he's done just about everything but that. That's kind of the missing piece for him. So we'll see if that changes this week. Plus, he gives the international feel. All right, uh, Andy, I, I've kept you long enough. Thank you so much, young man. And uh, everybody, check out his podcast because it's a, it's a hoot. Thanks, Paul. Talk care, soon. Andy. You bet.